السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته طلابي وطالباتي الأعزاء ويلكم باك إن فيزيكال كيمستري لاب 1 كيم 355 ماي نيم إز محمود عبد اللطيف إن ذيس كورس إز أندر كوليدج أوف ساينس كيمستري ديبارتمنت يونايتد أرب إماريتس يونيفرستي إن توداي إن شاء الله وي ويل ديسكاس ذا سكند إكسبيرمنت which is entitled cryoscopic determination of uh, molecular wave. The objective of this experiment just to determine the molar mass of unknown substance using colligative properties. In this experiment or in, in uh, this uh, presentation, we will see uh, the following concepts, colligative properties, molality, van't Hoof factor, molal freezing point depression constant, Kb, and molal boiling point elevation constant, Kf. Uh, first of all, the definition of the colligative properties are the properties of solutions which depend on the number of solid particle, but not on their nature. So this properties just only depend in the concentration of the solid in that solution. And actually it does not depend on the nature of that one, just the amount of solid. There are four colligative properties, which are boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, vapor pressure lowering, and osmotic pressure. If you are going to study uh, the boiling point of a certain solution, for example, if you add a non-volatile uh, solid, is added to a certain solvent in order to form a solution, you will find that the vapor pressure of solvent is lowered after addition of that solute. So if the vapor pressure of solvent is lowered, you will find that as a consequence, as a result, the difference in boiling point or the boiling point of solution will be higher than the pure solvent. There will be a difference in boiling point between pure solvent and solution which is given by delta Tb. And actually this happened because uh, the added solid, you could say that it acts as, as a layer which prevent the evaporization, the vaporization of the uh, uh, solvent. So the vapor pressure will be lowered. And as you know, the definition of the normal boiling point, the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the solvent will be the same like the atmospheric pressure. So this, the, 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 uh, the uh, vapor pressure is lowered, which means, okay, the boiling point will increase for a solution. Uh, looking to this diagram, which is vapor pressure and temperature diagram, for a solvent, pure solvent, and solution. There is, okay, there is a relationship between this vapor pressure and temperature, and the curve looks like this one. As you see, the trend of uh, that relationship, the increasing of temperature, the vapor pressure will increase. Do you know why? Simply because uh, increasing the temperature, it means you add more energy. So the movement or the motion of the molecules will increase. So it's easy to escape from the uh, liquid state and go to the vapor state. Okay, I have already told you that the normal boiling point of a uh, 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 solvent or solution, it will be the temperature at which the vapor pressure of uh, the solvent or solid equal the atmospheric pressure. So just draw a line which parallel to uh, x-axis, 
until it intersect uh, the curve. So, and then get the temperature corresponding temperature to this one. So, this one, T0, will be the uh, normal boiling point of pure solvent. Okay, if you'd like to get the boiling point of a solution, okay, just uh, extrapolate this line until it intersect with the uh, solution curve. It will intersect it uh, at that point. So you will find that T1 is higher than the boiling point of the pure solvent. And this value, it will be the value of the atmospheric pressure. Okay, one atmospheric pressure. See, there is a difference between the boiling point of pure solvent and a solution, which is given by this equation. We have already mentioned that uh, this colligative properties uh, depends mainly on the concentration, so it's directly proportional to the molality. So you can remove this uh, proportionality and add instead of it uh, equality. So it will be Kb times M, where Kb is the boiling point elevation constant, just constant, which is very characteristic to each solvent, to each solvent at a certain temperature, of course. And you will find here uh, a new uh, constant or a new term is added, which is I, where I is the Vant, Vant of factor. So uh, delta Tb, change in temperature between the pure solvent, I, the Vant of factor, which is the number of particles into which the solid dissociate. Okay, the number of particles uh, number of particles into which the, sol the solute you add dissociate to. For example, if you add a covalent or molecular compound like glucose, say to say, so it will not it will not be dissociated. So it will be the same. If you add one moiety, it will be one moiety. If you add an ionic compound. Uh, like sodium chloride or calcium chloride, this, these are ionic. Once it's added to a solution, to a solvent, it will dissociate into ions, particles. Through this one, it will dissociate into sodium cation and the chlorine anion. Calcium chloride will be dissociated into calcium cation and the two chloride anions. So the Vanto factor here will be two. Uh, which are two particles, and here it will be three, which are three particles. For glucose or any molecular compound, it will be just only one. And Vanto factor, it's, it's, it is an integer number, okay? M, the molality, which is def defined as the number of moles of solid per kilogram of solvent, and uh, Kb is the proportionality constant, which is the molar uh, boiling point elevation constant. In the same way, if you are going to uh, talk about, about the freezing temperature, simply you can define the freezing temperature and the temperature at which the very small amount of uh, uh, solvent starts to sol solidify or crystallize, okay? So for a liquid to freeze, it must achieve a very ordered state. Once you go from liquid state, you go to solid state, uh, the entropy decreases, or the, uh, the order, you will uh, achieve the very ordered state that results in the formation of a crystal. Solutions are considered as impure. Okay, if you have pure solvent, and you would like to get a solution by adding a certain solute, so you could consider solution as impure liquid due to the addition of solid that inherently will be less ordered, okay? You will have ordered state and once you add another uh, uh, foreigner uh, or foreign substance which decrease this kind of uh, order, ordered state, okay? So it's less ordered the formation of solution will be less ordered and it's not so easy to to get the pure solvent not so easy to get the pure solvent okay so it's, it, it will be more difficult to freeze than the pure solvent so formation of solution 
uh, you could consider this uh, solution as impure liquids and as a result as a consequence it will be less ordered than the pure solvent so it will be difficult to crystallize than the pure solvent the change in freezing point between solution and the pure solvent is given by the following equation it will be the same like the previous one okay the change in the freezing point I van to factor M is the molality and the KF is a proportionality constant proportionality constant uh, uh, which is uh, molal freezing point depression constant so again delta TF change in temperature I the van to factor which is the number of particle into which the solid dissociates and I give you some example before M is the molality KF is the molal freezing point depression constant M molality it's given by lowercase m which equal the number of mole divided by the weight of solvent in kilogram and the n which is the number of mole and the weight divided by the molar mass or mo molecular weight okay this is a cooling curve if you start with a certain solution or a certain solvent and let it to be cooled down okay you will end up with this curve okay temperature decreases till uh, this point okay and then it increase a little bit and then keep uh, decreasing but let uh, first talk about the pure solvent okay you will find something like that one a temperature will be constant this temperature is the freezing point of the pure solvent uh, going into solution you will see this curve okay this jump uh, and then the temperature decrease again so just extrapolate this one till it intersect, uh, intersect this curve and this will be the freezing point freezing point of uh, solution freezing point of a solution okay and the relationship was studied this okay as this relationship we have already discussed or mentioned previously okay the experimental part uh, as I have already told the objective to determine the molecular weight of unknown sample uh, you need the following equipments large test tube and uh, 300 milliliter beaker uh, magnetic steerer temperature sensor or thermometer and uh, we are going to use cyclohexane as a solvent and unknown substance we are going to determine its uh, molecular weight okay this is the setup of our system large beaker which is ice uh, water bath and this is large test tube and this is our solution and this is thermometer or temperature sensor and this is a steerer plate or magnet stir plate and okay the large this which should contain a magnet inside here okay the procedure as I have already uh, 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 told you every time to read it very carefully from the manual and to follow the steps step by step Okay, you are going to use a pipe it just transfer. I, I'm going to show you some photos later on. Just use pipe it, transfer uh, uh, 15 milliliter of cyclohexane to a large test tube and just close it with the stopper. Insert the test tube into the ice container in order to do the cooling and start to register temperature using the data acquisition. Uh, acquis acquisition position uh, program uh, so register temperature with a lab pro device data acquisition just collect data acquisition uh, by using this device when you finish collecting your data just remove the tube from the ice in order to melt the solvent again and then you are going to repeat these steps but for a solution okay the first solution you are going to use just we 
weigh about one gram of the unknown substance uh, on the weighing paper and just transfer it to the cyclohexane in the large test tube. Make sure all sample uh, is completely dissolved. Then insert the test tube into the ice container again and start to register the temperature. In the second uh, run, just add another one gram of the unknown okay, sample and add it to the solution and be sure it's completely dissolved and repeat the previous step. These are some photos okay, for uh, my previous uh, students. Okay, this is a balance, digital balance. And we use weighing paper, as you see, just we one gram. And this is, okay, the large uh, test tube. We have to add this, uh, okay, uh, uh, solid to it. And be sure that it completely dissolve it. Okay. Okay, this is the ice uh, uh, container or ice uh, path container. You could use a beaker or uh, uh, a cup like this one. And this is the uh, ice. This is a large test tube, which is the solution is inside. Okay, and uh, just close it with the stopper. And this is the temperature sensor. Okay, which is connected to the uh, uh, lab pro device. And this is the uh, data uh, uh, collected. Okay, so this is data uh, acquisition device. Okay, again. This is a test tube. You add the 50 milliliter using a pipe it and just close it with the stopper. And this is temperature uh, sensor. This is again like the previous device that acquisition program or uh, lab uh, pro device which are connected to the desktop. And you should fix this large test tube using this stand. Okay. And this is a stair plate. Okay, in order to steer the solution. The results, you will see uh, this kind of uh, uh, cooling curve, temperature against uh, time. So start cooling, temperature decrease, decrease, decrease. Okay, and this is super cooling. You end up with the crystallization and then you will find another jump here. Okay, and this jump is due to the latent heat of fusion which let the temperature increase again and this is the normal freezing point this one just extrapolate it till uh, this one and then get the corresponding temperature this is temperature of the pure solvent you will see this one something like straight line which is par parallel to x-axis for pure solvent uh, going into uh, a solution you will uh, find the same behavior and instead okay this is a super cooling temperature then increase again temperature due to the latent heat of fusion and you will find the temperature decrease again by with inclined okay with uh, not a parallel line to x-axis because it's a solution just extrapolate till this cooling <coughs> curve and then you can get the uh, freezing point of that solution of course you will find that this temperature is lower than this of the pure solvent. Again, in details, okay? This is cooling curve, and this is a super cooling temperature. It increases again due to the uh, latent heat of fusion, and then become fixed again, and this is a normal freezing temperature. Just you can get it with extrapolation to get this one. Great, okay? So, uh, we are going to do the experiment for uh, uh, three times for the pure solvent, for pure solvent and two solution. For pure solvent, okay, temperature decreases, okay, and this is the temperature we need, okay. For the second solution, you will find that the temperature freezing point decreases, which is that one, uh, sorry, that one. Just extrapolate, you get this one. The third one, okay, to this <coughs> super cooling. And then start to decrease at that point just extrapolate to get it so okay see increasing the solid amount the uh, temperature decreases the red one the freezing point decreases again this is for pure solvent okay super cooling 
starts to increase again till b fixed which is parallel to the x axis just extrapolate to get the temperature of the pure solvent for a solution okay extra cooling uh, starts to increase again till fixed and you will sign you will find this curve is inclined in that way so just extrapolate this point and to get the temperature of the solution so you can determine the uh, uh, freezing point depression and using a constant you can determine the molecular weight as we see later on the, in the data analysis just collect your data in this uh, uh, table this is for cyclohexane the mass of the unknown here is zero you can determine the pure freezing or freezing point of the pure solvent okay and you can determine the molality uh, okay N now here we, we have no unknown so this is the first run you add one gram of the unknown so you will find there is a delta t in between so you can determine the molality here just add another amount of this uh, solute so the molality will be changed so you can determine the molecular weight in the second run and here you can take the average of these two uh, molecular weights <coughs> i'm sorry data analysis okay this is uh, the relationship we're going to uh, use van to hoff factor here it's one i'm going to tell you it's a molecular compound and the kf i'm going to give it to you it's a constant the molality just substitute it by moles per kilogram of solvent and the moles is n number of mole uh, sorry weight divided by the molar mass and you okay so just substitute by the molality this relationship up here and you know the delta t uh, the different freezing freezing temperature difference so you have only one unknown which is the molar mass you know the solvent of the uh, the mass of the solvent you take for example 15 milliliter of cyclohexane knowing its density you can determine its weight okay and you the weight here just you weight one gram of solvent in the first run and in the second run just add another one gram so this is known and this is known and okay uh, the kf is known given and this one you are going to determine so the only unknown parameter just is the molecular weight okay uh, see so the molar mass just rearrange this relationship it will give him by this equation kf is constant i'm going to give you the weight of solvent you weigh you get this weight using the balance and the delta tf you are going to determine using uh, the uh, cooling curve okay and the weight of the solvent we convert it in gram and multiply it by 1000 here so you can determine the molar mass Okay, this is some uh, data. You will see the cooling curve. So it looks like that one. Looks like that one. Okay. Uh, and with this uh, slide, I ended this experiment. I hope everything is clear to all of you right now. Uh, okay, uh, just uh, if you have any questions, just okay, you can contact me through my mail or my office phone. And until we meet, until we meet again, I wish you all the best and uh, see you next time, inshallah. And bye bye. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.